going up to bed and saying, <coughs> you know, <coughs> just enjoy it as much as you can this last couple of balls because this will be it. I had zero confidence. Nothing left in me. I didn't want to be on the field. Anyway, it was the end of the day. Uh, and I faced 10 balls, I think it was. I played and missed eight of them because at that stage in my, in my form, I wasn't finding the middle of the bat. And I remember the day ended, I was on three or four not out. And I went back to the hotel um, that evening and Debs had her, my wife had, had, had arrived to come spend some time with me. Um, and I remember saying to her, saying, well, you know, tomorrow's going to be my last day. They won't pick me after this. And um, again, we just had some quiet time together, some time in prayer. And we, uh, our, our request to God was just to give us a day of no pressure. A day where we could just, uh, a day where we could relax, regardless of the result, regardless of the performance. In fact, I wasn't interested in the performance. Just want to enjoy this last day of Test Creek. So we go back the next day to the ground. And when I left the hotel room, I said to she said, how are you feeling? I said, yeah, I'm actually feeling quite relaxed. Because I've relinquished the result. I actually don't care how many runs I scored today. In fact, I know I'm not going to score any runs, so it's like I've relinquished it. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, and like we go out to, to bat, and we now 250 runs behind, I think it was. Um, I can't remember who I was opening the batting with, but I'll never forget the second over facing Andrew Cade, who was... If you remember Andrew Cuddick, a six foot three um, fast bowler from England, and he had been had a, he had a great tour at that point in time. He had been getting a lot of wickets, and I think it was the third or fourth ball I faced of the day. And I played a back foot drive, which I hit for four. And I remember saying to myself, "I've never played that shot before. I don't play that shot. I can't play the back foot drive." <laughs> anyway, I, I hit this ball and I hit it for four. And and over late, I played in a covered run and I hit it up the middle of the day and I hit it for four as well. This is a man walking out to bat thinking that this will be it, this will be his last day of test cricket. And it was a weird feeling because I was completely relaxed and suddenly I hit two balls in the middle of the bat, which I haven't done for a couple of months. And, um, and I've now moved to ten very quickly. And uh, the story goes on. And on and on, and I bat the whole day, and I finished the day on 120 odd not out. And I wake up the next morning, and I bat the whole of the next day as well. <laughs> and I end up getting 275, and, and um, batting for 14 hours, saving, helping South Africa save the Test match, save my career, and end up playing for another five years. Another 50 tests for South Africa or 40 tests for South Africa. And um, this is on the back of an individual. And don't let anyone in tell you that professional sportsmen are supremely confident individuals. This was an individual with zero confidence, with nothing left in And the reason why I'm telling you this story is because this was a story of an individual who was vulnerable, who was at every low point in his life from a career perspective, um, was not in a good space mentally at all. And this is an individual walking out to bat in the highest of international competition. Um, but it just made just one small decision. You know what, God, I'm actually going to listen to you today. I want to listen to you. I'm giving this to you. I'm giving this day to you and this moment to you. And, and it, it, was, it, it was an incredible eye-opener for me spiritually to know that actually I don't have the power. Yes. But as long as I'm open to accepting it from Jesus and accepting it from God, it's amazing what can happen in one's life. And I only give you this story because it is the most, for me, the most powerful story that I have to tell you on this journey that I'm on, on this Christian journey that I'm on. A lot of people told me when I, when I made the choice to become a Christian, when I made the choice to follow Jesus Christ, um, and I made that decision, people said to me, what's going to happen to you is you, you were once there, now you're going to be here. This is black and white, black and white for you. And I often say to people, that's not, that's not the case for me. This is a journey for me. 
I'm on this journey that the more I discover about this relationship that I have with God, the more He reveals to me. And um, you know, I get it, I get it wrong uh, every day. I make bad decisions every day. I really do believe that. And I often say to people, if you try to, um, if you, if you're a, a non-believer and you're trying to look at me as a believer and find the answers. To what you need in your life spiritually, then please don't look at me because you're not necessarily going to find the answers there. And that's why when I stand up and talk to you today, I can only present you an example of what's happened to me in my life. 